Well, the value started with my father, uh, treating people with respect, uh, being truthful, living up to your word, working hard. Um, I learned all those from my father. And the interesting thing is we've been able to preserve those values through 65 years. It's amazing. So now we've got an organization of 2,500 people and they all buy into this. And we're all a family and we all work together and pull together and make the company successful. Yeah, you know, maintaining our culture is everything to our company, really, and to our brand. And I think we've got uh, a lot of horsepower uh, with having over 400 team members uh, with 25 years of experience or more. And so uh, that gives us a great, um, a great group to grow from, to learn from, to teach from, and uh, to maintain those, those values. We've also got great customers. You know, our customers, we really rise to the occasion with fantastic, you know, Fortune 100 customers that, 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 you know, require the very best of service. And I think that's another one that reminds us that values keep us strong. Values probably keep our brand strong. We've just written this book, and, and that tells all about the history of the company and, and about our values. And we named the book, Always Trust Your Cape. It's after a song by Guy Clark named The Cape. And one of the refrains, it's about this eight-year-old boy gets up on the garage and runs and with his cape on and tries to fly and crashes to the ground. And then the refrain talks about life is just a leap of faith. And you've got to always trust your cape. And that's, that's a lot of businesses go through that. when we became a Learjet distributor in the very early days. And there again, that was my dad, taking a risk, taking a chance, because he sensed that this might be the next big thing. Uh, and that changed the whole company. Uh, and then the other big thing was when my father passed away. He was our best salesman by far and away. And when he passed away, I'd been running the business, but it wasn't very big. Uh, and we had a small service business. But when he passed away, then we made the conscientious decision that we would focus on maintenance and not on sales. That was about the time that the OEMs were starting to sell airplanes directly, so we would have been out anyway. Uh, that, was a, that was a key decision. I was initiated into the business early because of flying. And my parents love of flying, my, my grandfather's love of flying. And so that really drew me in. I always think that's what a lot of us are drawn into this business because of that, that love of aviation. But pretty quickly we realize it's the people, you know, that you deal with. And it's the small tight knit group within business aviation that you see year after year that you deal with as customers or vendors. And uh, I think that's what ultimately drew me into this business and uh, decided I could make a career out of it. The best prediction that we can give is that, you know, there will be new participants in the industry and that changes forever. Um, and we get excited, I get excited because in 20 years, uh, we haven't seen a lot of new participants flying business aircraft. Now we are beginning to see that. And so I would hope that over the next 10 and 20 years, um, business aviation becomes uh, more affordable and more accessible to more people.